we are headed to the vet to pick up Millie. Uh, they kept her overnight, so something must have concerned them. Uh, They're on the side of caution. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Well, we're on the subject of spay and neuters. Here's a little food for thought for Jeff. Do they? Do you think they have the technology to spay and neuter chickens? And I would be willing to say. If they spayed a chicken, a hen, it would most likely kill them because that's their whole. They need that process to go through to uh, stay healthy. Yeah. It's said that when a hen stops laying, uh, her health declines and she's not going to live very much longer. Yeah. So, and I know they can uh, they can fix roosters. It's called a uh, uh, castration. Uh, yeah, capone. What do they call them? Uh, I don't remember the name, but yeah, you can't castrate roosters. Boy, he'd be a miserable rooster, though, because that's what they live for. <laughs> <laughs> but I do know, if you got any hens, you, uh, you want to, because I, I got experience with chickens, too, keep an eye on their combs. If their combs, um, if they're not bright red, I mean, that's a sure sign that they're healthy. If they're nice and bright and red. Now, if they are molting or, you know, setting eggs, their comb's probably going to be real dull. But that doesn't mean they're not, you know, a, when a chicken sits on eggs, it's doing it most of the time. It just gets up, gets something to drink and eat, and goes right back. So that you're going to see a chicken stressing when they're, when they're setting eggs. So, right? Yep, yep. Uh, pullets will have a, you know, a faint pale comb. And then uh, you know they're getting ready to start laying their first eggs when that comb gets bigger and brighter. And yep, same with their molting and sitting on eggs. Uh, but if they're not molting, not sitting on eggs, and not a pullet, and their comb is pale, then you might have some health problems to deal with. There we have it. All right, we'll be back when we get Melly. Hopefully everything went well. You can get out that way if you take a lift, but we got Miss Melly. You're all you got. You got pasture credit now. Yeah, it's like street credit, but it's for a country dog. It's called pasture credit. Yeah, you've had surgery. All my dogs got pasture credit. All right, we're heading back. What you sit down? She did fine. Melly. I'm gonna put you in there, okay? Come on, you got your bed in there. Yeah, you got your dog house. Your dog house. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it together. Oh. Uh -huh. Good girl. Come here. Come here. See that? That's your dog house, okay? You got a fresh bucket of water, and I'm gonna go bring you some food. You just gotta stay in here a few days. Yeah. It's gonna be raining for a few days anyway. You got your choice of two dog houses, okay? I need to get them out of your place, but I'll be back in a minute. You stay in here and go lay down. Get you some food. All right, we got her in there. She probably don't know what to do but you know how it's like being in a kennel because you were in that one for five weeks appreciate your help no problem once again Jeff come through but shouldn't have to haul any more dogs for a while and the reason I needed Jeff uh, because he's got the van we can pull out a seat she's a bigger dog and you see how high my truck is uh, -uh. there was no lifting her up in there She's still eating grass. So she should be fine in there. So, but this is really handy for transporting dogs. Well, here, come here, Tilly. Millie's in here. You want to come see? I see you through there. Millie's in there. That stranger's over there, too. The bearded one dun, dun, dun. is here. Yeah, they, they probably think you are the guy that's in, you know, responsible for them. Because every time you show up, one of them gets hauled away. Yep, I'm the troublemaker. Yep. I'm the I'm the evil villain that, oh, see, yeah, she's walking Come away. here. 
You wanna go see Millie? Did you just stick your tongue out of me? You ain't got no scratches. Let's just have it. Welcome to the channel. We, as you seen, we just got back with Millie. She is in, it's a several hours later. She's in the kennel. She moved into her dog house like I thought she would. I uh, put some food out there. She hasn't touched it yet, so she'll eat. Tilly did the same thing. They're, you know, after surgery, they don't want to eat. But she'll, she'll come around. She's doing fine. Uh, they were just a little concerned because they found some ticks on her and they didn't want her, you know, and plus having the litter of babies, I just wanted to observe her. And she was a little nauseated, but other than that, she did good. So, what are we going to do for the rest of this video? Well, we're in my kitchen, ain't we? Let's fix some vittles. And I'll tell you, I'm going to cook Salisbury steak. Man, I walked all over the produce department in my local grocery store. Couldn't find any Salisbury's. So I asked the guy, I says, where's the Salisbury's? He says, what's that? I said, you, you ain't never had Salisbury steak? It's what you put in Salisbury steak. He looked at me, shook his head, and walked away. Didn't say a word. I'm like, how rude. So then I went over to where the pie fillings are. You know, they got apples and some blueberries. And, nope. No Salisbury's. <sighs> I even stopped at the local co-op to see if they had any Salisbury seeds so I could grow me a Salisbury plant. They ain't never heard of them. So, uh, guess I'll look on Amazon, see if I can get me some seeds. But, come to think of it, I ain't never seen one either. And how come you don't see them in the steak? Do you got to grind them up? If any of you know, comment. Because I ain't got no clue, man. But I guess we're just going to make hamburger steak because I ain't got no Salisbury's. So that's what we're going to do. Here we go. All right, excuse the hooligans in the background if you hear them. They are in there, they've got cabin fever, and they are tearing things up. All right, I've got me a half an onion in there. Let's go ahead and chunk that meat in there, just chunk it. Take me a couple eggs, I'm saving the eggshells, put them in my soil. Yes, sir, get them out of there, get it out of there. And let's take a little, we're not going to use that garlic and pepper. You know what we're going to do? We're going to put in some real garlic. Let me um, get it out of the fridge. Y'all watch that. Make sure, make sure no flies get in it. Listen to them little hooligans out there. They sound like a bunch of monkeys. When they make that noise, I call it chimpan dogging. A little garlic in there. <laughs> yeah, sir. Y'all seeing that all right? Right there. And I'm gonna take one hand. Oh, we're not done. We're gonna put a little liquid smoke in there. Just a little bit. A little Worcestershire. Just a little bit. A little pepper. I'm gonna take my meat hook that I just washed and I'm gonna grind it and it's gonna get cold. Uh, that egg just helps it stick. Might be a little bit too much onion, but is there such a thing? Listen to them. I mean, my life is just different having them puppies. Woo, that's cold. You gotta smash it. Alrighty. Don't have to go overboard with it just till it starts to firm up a little bit. Get that egg mixed in there. That's why I do it with just one hand. Because your nose always seems to itch when you got both hands into some food product. 
and you don't want to reach up there after your hands have been out in this business and scratch your knob nose all right that's good we're gonna go to the next step i'm gonna make them into patties and i'm gonna fry them up on the stove because we're gonna cook these in my electric skillet y'all look up at me and i don't want all that grease in there we got to drain grease so we're going to cook them on the frying pan then we'll transfer them over do all the mushrooms and gravy you're going to get hungry here all right i got them frying up in here now i ain't going to cook them all the way through just enough to get some of that grease out of there i also had to put two more over there because that pan ain't big enough uh, i should have used my cast iron but i didn't we're going to let these cook, come back, start whipping it all together. Alright, I transferred them over into my electric skillet. I'm going to add a can of beef broth. Put it in there. And you know what? With a lid like that, you ain't got to open it all the way, man. You just ain't. Just enough to where that stuff will pour out. Ha! <laughs> Bet you never knew that. Watch it simmer. All right, while that's simmering in there, I'm gonna cut me up some fresh mushrooms. Then we're gonna add them. And then you'll see the next step. Look at it steam up. You could write your name in that. I almost bought a new one today, but I figure I can get a few more months out of this one. All right, let's cut up some fresh mushrooms. Can y'all see? Y'all never can see. There we go. Easiest way to cut a mushroom, cut it in half, lay it on its side. Yes, I hold the knife funny. Then you chop it. Believe it or not, there's people who don't know how to cut up a mushroom. Cut it in half. Flip it on its side. I'll show you another way too. And then when you when your cutting board fills up, get it off there. Put it in the pot. Get in there. Ooh, that cord's close to me. Get in there. Good enough. I want my cord burning up. There we go. Another way to do it is, if you like them big, just cut your flat spot, flip it over. See? Those are too big. Dump it in there. Use the lid. Pull it off. And we'll do two more. And then on the last one, what I like to do is just cut half of it, just like that, and then take this half, y'all in there, and eat it. Here's what ails you, man. All right. We'll let this cook a while. Mushroom club, and I'll be back. Alright, all I'm going to do for gravy today is this McCormick's brown gravy mix. I don't know. I ain't into making no gravy. I don't even know how to make brown gravy. It says just mix water in with this mix. I've used it before and one's not enough. Get on out of there. But I'm going to show you something else. Alright, I guess that's all out of there. For whatever reason, and I don't know even know how you do this, I lost a measuring cup. So I got no clue how much two cups of water is. And that each pack takes a cup of water. But did you know that one of these water bottles equals exactly two cups? So now I know. So we're just gonna turn this dude on. 
and slowly add it. Oh, oh, oh. I'm teaching you how to make mixed gravy. If you like it a little thicker, take a swig out of it. Ah. Ah. All right, and I sit here for like a full for 10 minutes, stirring this or whatever till it boils. There you has it, brown gravy. I could have bought it in a jar, but I, this stuff ain't bad. I've had this before. And it's low sodium. I've got to watch how much salt I eat. But with summer coming on, I'm not going to have to worry about that a lot because I'll sweat my butt off. All right, I'm not going to bore you with that. But some of you may have known that. Some of you may not. Two cups. So if you got a recipe that calls for four cups, just keep your bottle, pour it from the tap. Cha-ching. Fill it up again. Cha-ching. Just a little bit of knowledge there. Discovered on accident. All right. I guess the gravy's done. It said, let stand for one minute. I am not a man to let things stand. If it says let stand for five, I, I'm into it. I'm eating it already. So we're going to take this gravy, pour it in there. What else do you do with it? Ooh. And just kind of shimmy it. Look at that. That's going to be fun to wash out, ain't it? I guess I didn't stir enough. That's because I'm always bucking the system, man. I don't follow rules. Never have. Alright, so now I'm going to reduce the heat on this deal here. And just let this mangle and mangle. Tangle and tangle. And guys, this isn't a fancy cooking video like I normally do. If you want to watch those, they're in there. It takes a lot to film in the kitchen. I don't have the equipment. That's going to thicken upon standing, I'll bet you. Alright, I'm going to reduce this down to simmer. Put the lid on it and forget it. And I'm not going to fix the plate right now. Because I'm not going to eat right now. I'm going to serve up some mashed potatoes. I went cheap. Smoky bacon and cheese, yeah. I'm going to make some of that. I'm going to make a salad. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to dig in. But I'm not going to eat for probably two hours. So let's take a last gander at it. Then we're going to go out and see how Miss Tilly, Millie's doing. Ooh, Salisbury steak without the Salisbury's in there. You got any Salisbury seeds? Send them to me. I'll grow my own daggum Salisbury's. Yeah, I was going to buy a new one today because this leg's broke and it's getting the, the coating on it. It's getting a little wore out. And then I seen a huge one. It's like 16 inches. But I'm watching my funds right now. I don't want to waste any money. This will do. The leg works, but the screw went missing in it. So, all right, let's go see Miss Millie. All right, we've had some good rain. Let's see what we got coming up in here. Okra. Got okra coming up. Got the radishes, of course. Watermelon. There's one coming up. That is uh, spaghetti squash. That was sent from a subscriber. And nothing coming up in there. Let me see what it is. Well, oh, I didn't write on there. Maybe I didn't plant those. So the only other thing hasn't sprouted yet. Yeah, I think I see something in there. Cantaloupes. Uh, that came from a subscriber. All right, let's go see how she's doing. Shut up, Squatty. Squatty Squatters. We got a Tilly in here. We don't. Oh, you was over. Was you over visiting Miss Millie? Yeah. Well, she's coming out. Are you okay? <laughs> you can tell that thing's so slow. Oh, you was trying out the other dog house, huh? Well, look at you. Oh, it's starting to rain again. You gonna try to eat something? Yeah, I gave you, you know, you're getting that all in there. I gave her some uh, 
wet food on the side there, half a can, and then she's got dry. Well, all the stuff on your face is falling into your food. Well, that's good she's eating. That's a good sign. Good girl. Are you mad at me? Well, you shouldn't be because now you get to stay here. That was part of the arrangement we made. You wouldn't have any more kids. Huh, Tilly? Yeah, you signed that agreement too. Let's go check out the garden, guys. It's in there simmering. Can you hear it? Probably not, but it's in there simmering. Yeah, that Salisbury steak. All right. Nothing's planted in... Ooh, there you go again. Nothing's planted in any of these yet. There's Willie. What you doing, Willie? There's the group. Well, the tomatoes are doing very good. And there's different varieties of tomatoes in here. I have no clue because uh, I didn't put the cards or the popsicle sticks in there. I got them mixed up. Yeah, look at that. Look at that rosemary or thyme. That's thyme. I've said that time and time again. Dill. Uh, we got some coming up there. I don't think that's anything. Might be. There's one. These are all the hot peppers in here. Yep, there's some coming up. Planted one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. It's loaded with them. And basil's coming up. Oh, these are all coming up good in here. Some of these may be weeds. That's definitely not. Uh, cilantro. And the Thai basil is yet to make an appearance. So we'll wait and see. 50s in the 50s right now, not bad. I can handle this. It's good working weather. So, well, that's getting end it, guys. Now, I, I didn't plan on doing a, you know, they kept her overnight. So I didn't want to leave, leave you guys hanging on how she was. So I uh, just did a short, you know, me and Jeff going this morning and a little cooking video. What's wrong with that? make you hungry and you get to see that Nellie's okay and she'll be fine I'm gonna keep a close watch on her once they get past three days they're usually fine but uh, she's a little goofy so I'll keep an eye on her we'll take good care of her happy trail oh y'all want to see the daddy to these puppies right there look at that bohemoth guy that is definitely the daddy if uh you can't see him, I'll blow it up where you can. We'll just go over here and see him. You bring my child support check? Hey, Mac, I'm talking to you. Did you bring a child support check for your puppies? He is a good looking dog, though. So that's how big. Yo, did you bring a check? Look at him, that's how they do deadbeat parents. You just act like nothing's going on. That's a big boy. All right. And there's Squatty Squatters. Hey, hey, Millie, you stay. Uh, 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 you stay. You don't go hang with the likes of them. They're wild, undisciplined. Millie, or Tilly. Uh, 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 I don't worry, she's, she's fixed now. There's Squatty Squatterson. See, there's a whole line of them coming. <sighs> of course, she's got puppies. Come here, Millie. Come here, Telly. Come on. Come on. Good girl. See, she's starting to listen to me. Good girl. <laughs> All right, guys. Happy trails.